When I first decided to learn Obsidian, I quickly noticed how intrinsically connected it is to developers' tools and terms. And although I'm familiar with the terminology, I'm not a developer. Uh, my expertise is organization and workflows. So we'll learn this together in a series of videos for non Developers. But if for some reason you are a developer watching this and the upcoming videos, please help us leaving your comments and suggestions in the comment section. Okay, let's start by addressing the elephant in the room. This can be a little confusing, but bear with me for a moment and you understand it. This first section here is all about the prices of the features and how to support uh, Obsidian. For example, you have this 25 tier option here. It's a single payment. You have support and early access to insider builds, special beds, and things like that. And by the way, if you like what I do here and you want to support the channel, feel free to join my Patreon or become a YouTube member. Down here we have the prices for synchronization and also to publish some or all your notes. It's possible to synchronize for free. There are some options. I tested many of them and this is a topic for a future video. For now, let's go back to the first section again. And as you can see, the personal option is 100% free. You have access to all the features. You don't even need to create an account. This is amazing. You can use this on your computer. And this is how I started testing Obsidian. And this is what I suggest you do. So let's click here on download Obsidian. Assuming that you have downloaded and installed Obsidian, you now have to create what it's called a vault. It's basically a folder where your files will be. There are some options here and you can, for example, create a folder to use with Obsidian or start Obsidian and then create the folder. Uh, I'll create a folder here because I know what I want to do. So let's call this folder YouTube. But like I said before, you don't have to do this. When you open Obsidian for the first time, you can click the quick start option and Obsidian will create the folder for you. Here it is, the folder I created, YouTube, and here is the other folder. But since I created this one just to show you how it works, I'll delete it. And now let's go back to Obsidian and select the option to choose a folder, and I'll choose the YouTube folder. Okay, this looks pretty simple, but believe me, there are many options here. Too many icons to click, too many settings. So what I'll do is show you the basics and I'll show you new options, new configurations, new features as we go. So if you want to join me on this journey, subscribe to the channel. The first thing I want to show you is this, how to create a new note and how to create a new folder. If I create a new note here, let's call it new note. Okay, I can of course write here something and go to the Obsidian folder on my computer and click here. I can see that note here and I can even open it. See? Okay, let's go back now and I'll create a folder. Again, if I go back to my computer, to the file system, I have the folder here. Pay attention to Obsidian while I drag a new file to the YouTube folder. There it is. The same file is here and here. If you stop to think about it, this is very good because even without Obsidian, even if you stop to use Obsidian in the future, you still have access to all your files. Okay, let's go back to the user interface. Again, new note new folder, here we can change the sorting order, and here we can collapse or expand all the folders. Here in the top, we can change the view of this side window. We are uh, seeing all the files and folders, but we can jump to search or to start. This is just a shortcut. Let's go back to the files view and right click here 
and start this file. Now when I go to start, I can see that there, it's a shortcut. Down here, we have the vaults. If I click here, we'll go back to that first window. Here we can create a new vault or we can open another vault. This is another interesting feature of Obsidian. You can have and open multiple vaults in different instances of Obsidian. And we have the settings. There are many settings here, many options. And like I said, it's best if we do this, if you learn this as we go. When you are working with notes in Obsidian, there's a different mindset. If you are writing something on Word, for example, and you drag an image or any other file to that Word document, that file is now part of that note. The Word file you end up with will keep everything together, the text and the image. On Obsidian, this doesn't exist. Obsidian files are text files. So to add an image or other document, a PDF or something that is not a text file, you have to have that file in the file system. Okay, I think it's better if I show you. Here we have that text file we created uh, a while ago. And I also have here the logo, the image. To add this image here, I have to have it in Obsidian. So I can now drag it here and the image will be here. However, if I delete this file from Obsidian, I'll do this here. I'll delete it. Okay. It's gone. Did you get it? We have to have both here, the text file and the other file or other files that we want to add to that note. Let's delete this. You can drag a, a file from your computer into a note like this, but pay attention. Obsidian will create that file in the file system on the left. Did you see it? It's back here. What's more, Obsidian is, is smart enough to keep these files connected even if we move one of them to a different folder. Obsidian will update the connection. So let's move this one here, new node. And since we are here, let me show you this. So again, it's now you can see that the file is inside that folder. The note we created is still intact. Obsidian updated the link. Now let's move that image inside that folder. And here, as you can see, Obsidian updated the file structure in the computer. And it also updated the connection, the links. So you can still see the image inside the node. Okay, now it's a good time for our Obsidian Ninja friends to jump in. I'm struggling a little bit with the separation files and text. The first idea I had was to create a folder there I named files and I would put all the files there, images, PDFs, everything there. And I would have the notes and their structure, their, their folders, and I would drag the images to those notes when I needed to create a note with an image or a PDF or whatever it was. That quickly got pretty messy. So what I'm doing now is each main folder has a files folder. So let's rename this here, for example, to video production. And inside this, right clicking here, I can have a new folder, files. So each main topic in my Obsidian vault has a files folder. I don't know if this is the best approach to it, but it's working much better than having a single files folder. Which brings us to another problem. As you can see, there is no formatting bar here. To format your text, you have to learn Markdown. There's a video here on the channel uh, explaining how Markdown works. It's not hard. You can quickly get used to it if you practice a little bit. And I'd say that I cannot really call this a problem. It's just how things work on Obsidian. If you Take a look at the URL, the, the company address, it's obsidian.md. Can you see <laughs> the markdown there? We have to learn it, but 
like I said, it's not hard. Let me show you some examples. But before that, let's take a look at this other icon here. It's a book. If we click it, we now have a pencil. So if we want to edit a note, we have to click here to edit it. Now I can write whatever I want. And if I click it again, it's going to the reading mode. Now if I click the note, I cannot write anything. And there's also a setting inside the editor. We have this default view for new tabs. Every time you open a note, it can open in editing view or reading view. You can set this. This is a little confusing. It took me a while to get used to it because I'm seeing that little book there and I'm here thinking, okay, I'm in reading mode, but that's not what's happening. If I wanna go to reading mode, I have to click here and now I'm on reading mode, but now I'm seeing that pencil there and I'm thinking, okay, I can add it, but I, I cannot, I'm reading mode, so to add it, I have to click here. Okay, so now I can delete this. Let's say you wanna make this word here bold. All you have to do is wrap it into asterisks. Okay, uh, italic is one, so let's make file italic. And if you wanna make a bullet list, all you have to do here is add a minus and space. If I wanna change this, I have to click here and remove the formatting, the symbols. But if you prefer to see the note in markdown mode, all the symbols, you can also go to settings and change it. We have here live preview, it's what I'm using, but we can change this to source mode. Let's go back. So now the note is only text and symbols, plain markdown. To see the formatting, you have to go to reading mode. I don't like this, so I'll change this back to pre live preview. I think this is better. Okay, next video is all about my structure, how I'm organizing my notes and folders and everything in Obsidian. I'll start building that with you. And I'll also start talking about other features like connecting notes, using parts of a note inside another note, uh, tags, and others. So if you wanna keep learning, subscribe to the channel. And if this video was helpful, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. Thanks for watching, see you soon.